Hello, and welcome to PE Design Basics. Today we're going to talk about the basics of your um, PE Design software. This tutorial is actually for newcomers to the PE Design family. You will learn the workings of your new software. PE Design is very powerful software, and you can create amazing designs. I've used the software for a couple of years myself, and I continue to learn more and more each day. So what I'm going to do is I'm next actually going to now open my software and share it with you. And I'm going to move my panel, my recording panel, so we can see everything. Now, in your tutorial handout, you have our layout and editing home screen, which is on page one. And what I'm going to do is go through all of your icons on your software. Here we have our file icon, which we can open a new, des a new design. We can open an existing design. We can import designs from file, from design center, or from our embroidery card. We can save or save as, export, write to um, other designs or other PES files. We have our properties, our print setup, print preview, print, and this will also list all of of our design previewed or opened recently. Here we have our edit button, which is edit, undo, redo, group, ungroup, copy, cut, duplicate, paste, delete. We can change to straight, change to curve. We can mirror an image horizontally or vertically. We can rotate it. We have a numerical setting where we can edit our size and we can rotate here, we can center, we can align, and we can select all. Here we have our image where we can input from a file, from Twain device, from portrait, or from clipboard. We can output to a file or clipboard. We can select our device that we would like to import our image from, which is our Twain device. Our Twain device is another device that you can find your um, designs or your images on. We can modify. Our image to stitch wizard is our automatic digitizing um, tool, and then we can display our image, fade on, fade it, or off. Our next is our text. This is where you can edit your letters. You can do your text setting attributes. You can fix the text path, release the text path, transform, clear transformation, true type font settings, and convert to an outline object. Here we have our sew, we have our sewing attribute, our sewing color and sewing order. We have a set sew hole, which we will cover in later um, classes. We can cancel our hole sewing. We can stitch to block, convert to stitches. This is for our applique, which is covered in a future class as well. We can display our grid setup, which is our grid here that we digitize with. We can preview, we can do a realistic preview. We can do a realistic preview with our attribute settings. We can do a stitch simulator. We have our reference window, our toolbar, and our status bar. And under options, we can go to our design center. We can do our programmable stitch creator. We can set our design properties, our design property page, our edit user thread chart, and we can select our um, system unit either in millimeters or in inches. Now, our second toolbar, which is the toolbar here, we can new, once again, open, we can import a file, we can export, a, import from Design Center. Here we can save, we can write to a card, we can undo, we can redo, Cut and copy. Here we can rotate horizontally, vertically. Here we can rotate our designs. Here is our shortcut to our stitch wizard. This is these four we can transform our text with. Here we have our stitch sewing attribute. Here we have our preview window. Here is our realistic preview. This is our stitch simulator. 
Okay, on our toolbar three, we have our two stitch types. We have a zigzag stitch. This is our thread color, and if we click there, it will open up our thread chart. So we'll hit cancel. If we click here, next to our zigzag stitch, you can go from a zigzag to a run stitch, a motif stitch, and an easy stitch. These we will cover later. Here, if you click this, our region set, you can either delete it or we can include it. Again, your thread chart will include your color chart of all your threads, and you can edit that as you need. Here we have our fill stitch. We can go from our satin stitch to our fill stitch to our programmable fill stitch, our motif stitch, cross stitch, and so forth. This fourth toolbar here is one of our main toolbars for digitizing. This is our select object tool, which is the cursor that we have now. In order to control any part of your design, you must first have your select object control. Here is where we have our edit points. We can select all the points in our design here. Here we can zoom in, zoom out, a one by one is when we go back to our actual size. Here is our lettering. We have our letter, our text, and then we have our monogram. This is for our circle or our arc. And we have our square and our rectangle shapes here. I will show you those later. And then we have our outline. And we have our straight line, our curve line. We have our manual punch tool. And then we have our ruler. So what I'm going to do now is slowly introduce you to all of the functions of your software. First, let's go to where we go to File, and since we're, we've already got one, we're already on a new page, we will open a design here, and we will choose a Halloween sign, we will go with our Halloween sign, select Open, and this will bring up our design. If, again, if we want to see what it looks like, here's our realistic preview button. If we click our realistic preview button, it will show us the realistic preview and design will look. We must always click the realistic preview again in order to get control and to edit any design that we have. Now, if I wanted to find out how many stitches were in my design, I would go to my stitch simulator. I would click here. My stitch simulator tells me there is 18,915 designs, 15 stitches in my design. It also tells me that there are four color changes. Now, as a digitizer, I would want to see how my work would stitch up. So I would click my play button, and my play button automatically shows me how my design will stitch out. If I click the plus thread button, it advances to the next color. If I click it again, it will advance to the next color. To go back and repeat a color, you, you press the negative. You can jump by thread colors or by stitches. Let's cancel. Okay. So we have now opened our design. Now, if I wanted to import a file, what I would do, let's go back, I want to select new. We're going to do a new one. And we're going to choose our import button, and we would import from a file. And we're going to choose our double. We click import, and we have just imported the double design in. Here again is our realistic preview button to show us what our double looks like. Now, we go here to our sew, we click on our sew, and we can select our sewing order slash color. When I select that, it actually gives me the color in which my design will sew out. So first, it will be my background. This plus button means that there are two different sections of red or more. So I've clicked this, and it tells me that there is one section of red here and the outline. Then my little devil's body, and then the outline of his body. Now I can edit each one of these by having just one of those squares highlighted. I'll click cancel. 
Now, the difference between opening our file and importing is I can import several designs into one file. So if I wanted to go here and, let's see, import my mummy, I now have my mummy and my bat and my devil side by side, and I now have two designs. Now, the difference with open and import is that I cannot, if I select open, it is going to give me the option to open a new file, and I can't add it to my existing file. So I would have to select no, because I don't want to save any changes to my other design. Okay, and this is also a quick way to get to your new. Here, our image button is where we input our clip art. We go to image, from file, and here I've saved a design for an egg. Click to highlight your egg, and we click open. Now, in order to digitize our egg, we need to make sure that it is size inside of our grid here. So we can move this and always remember to have your cross sign when editing and moving your designs. So we will just drag this and resize it like you would any other design or document. And as long as your clip art is within the compound, compounds of your graph, you will be okay. And so, now we're going to do our automatic digitizing, which is located on your second toolbar here, which is your magic wand, image to stitch wizard. And click, and you're going to come up with your auto punch. Now, under your, under this, you have your photo stitch, where you can do color or mono. You can do photo stitch two, color or mono, or you can do cross stitch. For this design, we're going to do Auto Punch. We click Next. Now, what what the software has done is it has decided that it's going to digitize this area and the pink dots. Now, I want the entire egg, so I must remove all of the grid lines from within this egg. I don't want the white, so I can X my white here. I don't need the brown, and I don't need the black. And that, so it leaves me with those four colors. If I don't want the brown, I would X the brown. And I click Finish. And the software will automatically digitize my design for me. Now, I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points around my egg. Which means that anything within this egg, as long as my cross is there, I can edit. But I want to see what my design looks like. So again, go to my realistic preview button, and there's my egg. I click, and if I'm not satisfied, I have my undo button here, and I can undo my egg. Here is my redo button. If I was like, oh, I don't want to go through all that work again, I can redo it. But we're going to undo, click our magic wand again. There's our auto punch. Click next. And we're going to delete all the colors except two. And remove the grid from here and click Finish. Okay. Now click our Realistic Preview button. And then now it shows us our egg again. So we're satisfied with how that looks. But if I wanted to rotate my egg a little, that's where my Rotate button here comes. And watch these little, my little points around it. If I click Rotate, they become hollow squares. I can then take those squares and rotate my design. Okay. I click Realistic Preview, and it will show me the angle of my design. Now, if, you're, if the back image is misleading, right click, select Modify, Modify will delete your clip art only, and then select Delete. Okay. So let's go to our cell, 
and we're going to go to sewing order and color. And if I notice here, I have plus signs by both. So I can go here and it will show me that this part is going to stitch out, this part, this part, and then this part. Okay, cancel to go back. Now, we have our full design. We go to our stitch simulator and we will, you can watch your image stitch out to make sure that it's stitching out the way that you want it to. Okay. Close that. Now we want to save our design. Okay. Now, before you start digitizing with any design, we would go to our sew, select sewing attribute, and this is our attribute settings. And what these settings are, are these are our basics for our stitching. This will determine the zigzag width of our design. This is our density for that zigzag. This is our region sew, and we always want under sew because under sew stabilizes your fabric for embroidery. This is our density. This is our direction of our stitches, which is at a 45 degree angle. You can change your direction by either moving this button or you can manually type in the number direction that you want your stitches to go in. Your stitch type here will determine your underlay stitch type. Your running stitch path will determine how your stitches will, will cut across your design once it goes from one color to another. Your stitch pitch is the frequency of your stitches on how close they are together. See, if I take it down, the stitches get cl closer together. And if I take it up, my stitches are further apart. The frequency is the order in which they are going to go in. Your pull compensation is where you use your pull compensation to allow for the stitches to pull into your fabric. So you would always want at least a point zero one for your pull compensation. So let's go back to our attribute settings. And my standard settings for zigzag is point oh four. I always select my under sew. I always choose my running stitch path to run along the outline of my design. My pull compensation is 0 0.01. You click Apply to save and close. So now if I want to digitize my egg, again, go to Image, Import from File, I'll select my egg, click Open. Now I will resize. And get my edges perfect inside of my craft. Click my magic wand here. My auto punch is highlighted. Click next. And again, I want to delete my white and those other colors at my colors here. Click finished. Now, I can a realistic preview by design and there it is. Now, let's see how it stitches out. Stitching out in the order in which I wanted it to digitize in. Okay. Now, say for instance, you wanted your egg a little bit bigger and you needed your graph bigger. So you're not going to work in a 4 by 4 hoop. We're going to go here and we'll go to our options, our design page properties. And under your design page properties, you have the ability to change your hoop size from a 4 by 4, 5 by 7, 7 by 5, all the way down to an 11 and 3 quarters by 5. So for this, we're going to do a 5 plus 7. We'll click OK, and it changes our hoop size here. Now, if you want to use colors that are eye-friendly or you wanted to change the background, you can go back to your design page property. And here, you can change the color of your background. 
So my background can go to Burgundy. I click OK, and there I have. Options again. We can go to our Edit User Thread Chart. And here is where our thread charts are created. Our Brother software has all the popular brands from Brother, Sulky, Madeira, Robinson Anton, Isocord, and Guthermix. So if you're using any other thread that you particularly like, you can actually create your own thread chart and save it here. Here, back under Options, again, you can go to your Design Centers, and if you work in millimeters, here is where you can change it from inches to millimeters. Okay. So let's click New. We're going to start over. And no, we don't want to save any changes to our design. Here, we will go to our text. You can do your text attribute settings. So we'll go to our letter A, which is our text. Click A. The first letter A is where you will actually create your words. Right-click on your screen, and then you can type whatever you want. So we're going to do PE Design Basic. We click OK. And once again, in order for me to move or edit this design, I must go to my select object to get control. You must click somewhere within the stitches of your design, and it will give you your cross. Now, my words are a little bit bigger than my design, than my graph. So I can do one of two things. If I wanted it longer, I can go here to Options, Design Page Properties, and I can change the size from a 5 by 7 to a 7 by 5 Click OK, and it changes the width. Or I can undo here. I can go here, click on within my design, and now I can resize. Here's my numbers for resizing. I can do a 0 0.20, which is smaller, or I can go larger here. So I will do a 0 0.60 to make it larger. Now I can go here to text, and I can go to text attribute settings. And this actually opens up my settings. Here, I can change I can change my angle. I can add my character spacing, which means if I wanted more space in between my letters. I can center it. I can change it to go up and down instead of sideways. And I click Apply. You always have to click Close. So now, there's my cross. I know that I can move my design. And there it is, but it's still too big for my page. So I can drop down. You can either select the numbers that are here. You're not bound by the 20, 40, 60, 80. You can actually type in 0 .50, and it resizes your design. You never, never take from a corner and just resize your design. That changes the density of your stitches. Let's undo. If you must resize, you click here. There are two ways. You click here, you hold down your control button, and you gently come inward. Or you can undo, and you go to Edit, Numerical Setting, we select Size, and it, when we go this way, it automatically tells us that we need to resize by 91% in order for it to fit within our graph. As a safety measure, I always take it down one number. We can preview it here, and if we like what we see, we click OK. Now we know that it will fit perfectly within our hoop size, because if we use the Edit Numerical Setting Size, this works within, your, within the graph that you have created. Our realistic preview will show us this is how our design looks. Again, undo Realistic Preview. Now here, I can import a file. I can import a design from Design Center. I can now save it. I can write my design to a card. If I'm not happy, I can undo it. Here is my sewing attribute settings. 
I click here, and it takes me back to my under sew, my zigzag. Okay. And I can do my preview, realistic preview, my stitch simulator. So we're going to clear this. Now we're not going to save any changes. And now I'm going to show you how to use your toolbar number three. We'll take our triangle. It's a simple bus click on your triangle. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a zigzag stitch and a sew stitch. Both colors will be black. So, to show contrast, I will change my stitch color by clicking on my thread. I will select red. OK. Now, I will right, I mean, left click my button, drag it down, and sideways. And I have just created a square. Now, my square is showing me all of the stitches. I click my realistic preview, and there it is. Don't worry about this line right here. What this line here is telling me is that it's going to stitch halfway, stop here, and then from this corner to here, it will meet and cover this line. Now, if I want it to, I can go here to my sewing, sew, select order, sewing order, click my red, and I can change it here to a really pretty pumpkin orange. I can click OK. Now that this is highlighted with my, nine, with my eight points, I now have the ability to go in and change from a zigzag to a run stitch. I can change to a motif stitch, an EV stitch, and with your EV stitch, you can choose for your E and your Vs to point inward, or we can go to Sewing Attributes, and it shows us our E stitch going inward or outward. We can decide if we want it to run once or twice. You can change the width of it here, which changes your width here. You can click Apply and Close. Now my EV stitches have rotated where they're pointing outward instead of inward. Now, if I wanted to change my orange, I go back to my sew order, select my orange. I can click Cancel because I'm not going to change my color. Now I can go to my sew stitch, and I can change it to a satin. However, when you're doing large areas, satin stitches are not appropriate because they tend to leave the gaps. We will go to our programmable fill stitch, and here is where we find all of our programmable fills. We click this button. It takes us to our sewing attribute. We will scroll down. And in this box, it says Programmable Fill. We will click once, left click once. The computer's running a little slow, bear with me. And it gives me all of my stitches. An apple, a bat, I can do squares, boo, let's see. I can do fur for bear, donut holes. I can do the Gianna. Let's, let's do this one. Click OK. Now, now that I've selected my pattern, I can decide if I want them to go smaller, which means I would take them 20 here, and you would make the numbers even here to make your designs look even. I can click OK. Now, here I can actually change the direction of my stitches for our added effect. Click Apply. Okay, now let's see what we have here. Our realistic preview will show us our new pattern within our design. Click realistic preview, and we're going to undo. Now let's choose something fun. Let's go to our sewing attribute, and we'll click here. Again, to our programmable stitches, and we can do boo. Select OK. Apply, close, a realistic preview here, and there are your words too. 
Also, while you're looking at your realistic point of view, you have the ability to zoom in on your design. And there are your booths. To go back to our original size, click one on one. That will take you back to your design. Again, close your realistic preview. To get control, click your select object. So we're going to start new. We're not, no, we're not going to save our design. Let's change our, our hoop size again back to a 4x4. Four four. Click OK. Now we're going to go to our circle button. And here we can select our zigzag stitch. We're going to do a circle. Okay. Oh, did two. Got to undo that one. Now we're going to go here to our edit points, and we're going to click our our select point. Now what this is going to do is when we click here. Oh, that's not doing it. Let's go back here. Let's highlight our design. Now go to our edit point. Not working. Hold on, let me zoom in a little. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Let's go to our fill stitch. Okay. Now we're going to do our circle. Go here. Select, and we can do our edit points. So it shows our edit, and it's not going to do it. Okay. I'm going to cheat. This is a tool our, here. Straight line tool. We can actually take it and create a straight line here. There we go. So we've created our triangle. Now let's see if our edit points will show. There we go. So my edit point is showing me that here is one point. Here's one point, and if I feel like there's anything in my design that needs more points, I can click and add points as I go, and that actually increases my stitch count. If I don't want them, I can delete them. So let's try this again. Okay. We'll go to our, our straight line, and we can click line after line. Go up here to our edit point, click here, and it will show us all of our points that we have clicked in our design. Now, no two digitizers will digitize identically, which is how people can tell their work when people have copyrighted theirs or duplicated their work because no two digitizers are going to have the exact same points. So I have one point here. If I feel like I want it to add more here, I can add a point here. And then come here and pull this one up. And what I'm now doing, as you can see, is I'm editing and changing the shape of my design without having to start over. So now I'm creating something totally different by simply using my edit points. So, close. Oh, here's a good example. Okay, when I clicked here, Start over. Here is my outline. I click my straight line. Now, watch your third toolbar. Click here. It now adds a new line, which is called your open path. You can have an open path or a closed path. Your open path is a straight line that doesn't close. So you can make weird shapes and not have to close them. And make straight lines. Now, now, when you go to your closed path, a closed path means that it is going to close your design up. So even if I stop here and I double click, it is still going to fill in that gap because I have selected for it to close my path. Let's undo. Okay. If I do an the difference is when I choose an open path, it will delete the ability for me to have a fill stitch. 
everything. But it still gives me the ability to have a zigzag, a run, a motif, and my EV stitches. Now, when I go to my clothes path, I have the ability to have my zigzag and my fill, or I can delete whichever ones I want. If I just want my zigzag, I can still do this. I can stop here, and it still fills in my gap. Undo. I can close my, get rid of my zigzag and just have a fill stitch, and the same effect happens. It fills in my, my fill stitch for me. Okay. Our manual tool is where we manually digitize the design. We're manually inputting our stitches. There they are. And it was done in a satin stitch, which gives you really big lines. Okay. Okay. So our ruler, you take your ruler, you right click, I'm sorry, you left click, and you drag down. And if you look at the bottom of your screen, it will tell you the length is 3.71. Okay? Or I can measure this way, this way, or this way. By just holding down my left um, now, click button. And it tells me the length of my design from here to here to here. Okay? So, let's start here. Now we're going to go and we're going to open a design. And we will choose our Halloween sign again. Click. Okay? Now, if we wanted to add something else to our design, we'll let go here. Click Import. Now we've got to choose where we want to import from. So, we have all of our designs. Let's go to Halloween Extras. We have a bat. So we can import our bat, and now we have the ability to move our bat wherever we want. So, and here, since my bat is here, and I wanted him to face the cat, I can rotate him, do a vertical mirror, and he rotates. Now I still have the ability to move him up a little bit. And there we have our bat with our cat. Click our realistic preview, and there he is. Now, if I wanted to go in, I can delete my cat. I'd have to delete his eyes and everything with him, but I can delete my cat and add something else. Now, if I wanted to, instead of um, trying to import another Bat, hold on. Let's get him out of here. Okay. Let's do import my bat again. Import. And I've decided I want him here. Let's rotate him again, a vertical mirror. Send him that way. Now, I really like my bat, but I don't want to import another one. So now I have the ability to right click, select duplicate. And now I have two bats, one of which I can move here. All with simple right click, I've just duplicated my my bat. Now each time I add an des uh, extra design or an extra image to my design, it increases my stitch count. And it also increases the colors of my design. So now I have 10 colors in my design. Click here. Close. Now I have one bat and I have two bats. And they're the same color. So I can go to my sew, sewing order slash color. And I notice that here's one bat. Here's the outline. Here are the eyes. Here's the bat. Here's the outline. Here are the eyes. Well, instead of me changing my thread colors, six more times, I can now group my colors by simply clicking on my, num my number of the color that I want and dragging it down. So it goes from 5 to 5-1, five 5-2. Dash five dash well, I still have my, my outline of my bat here and an outline here. So I want to move this outline here. And the reason I'm not moving it here is because if I move it here, 
this route line is going to do go before this one, which will line my cat, my batch up in order. And I will click OK. So now when I get ready to stitch my design, I can fast forward past my orange, fast forward past that, fast forward, and now it's going to stitch up my back. This little button here speeds up your stitch simulator. See? So now it's stitching my back, my outline here, my eyes, and it's done. Okay. Let's click New. So we're not going to save any changes to my designs. And we are going to open a design. Let's go. Find something else that we can open. Let's see. Let's do our Cody Bear. This is one that I've digitized. Um, and he's, he's really cute. We can select and we can see a realistic preview. Say, for instance, we wanted to change the brown. We go to our sew, sewing order, and here is our brown, brown bear. We can click cancel now. Now it's telling me that his outline has a run stitch and he has a fill stitch. Well, I want to change it to a programmable fill. I'll click here to decide which one. Here is our programmable fill. And I want to add realistic fur. There's our fur. OK, and my ideal setting is 0 0.20, apply, close, and now my bear has a texture fill. And, but if I'm just happy with the way he was, I'll do undo, and he's now at a setting, so I have to undo again, and he's back at his original design. If I select my bear again, and I click my edit points here. It's showing me all of my edit points that I have within my bear. Now let's zoom in. And select our edit points again. And there are my edit points along my bear. All of my little squares are my edit points. Here we can zoom out by clicking on our design. Now. Here is our text. We can go here and we can add lettering. Let's do Cody. We click OK. Now, I don't want, I want to transform my letters because they're going the wrong direction. We click within the stitches of, my, of the letters, click text, text attribute settings, and now we don't want them up and down. We want the direction to be straight across. We click, go back to all of our default settings, click Apply, Close. And now I have my cross, so I know I can move my Cody sign. Well, he looks kind of small, so we can go here, and I can resize him to 0.80. Now, my stitch type is automatically defaulted to a set. Here are my fonts. If I click here, it will tell me the fonts that I can change it to. So I can go here, and it automatically changes all of my fonts for me without me having to edit it. Here. And you can continue to go on until you find the font that is user friendly for you. I'll take the second one. So now I have my Cody, I have my stars. So let's do a realistic preview. And there he is. Now he is in a five by seven hoop. And I can change it to an eleven by seven. Click OK. Now if I right click I can do select all and I can slide him anywhere I want within my graph. Now I can go here. Again, we're going to import because if you open your design, you're going to have to start over. We're going to import another design. Let's 
go here. And let's import our little devil. And there's my little devil. So now I have two designs within one hoop size. And I can click Realistic Preview. And that's how it's going to stitch out in my hoop. Again, here's my Undo button. I can click Undo. Or I can write it to a card. I can save it. I'm not, I'm not importing anything from Design Center, or I can import to a, from a file. So we're going to click Undo. But now it gives me the option to redo it if I want it to. But now we're going to undo again. Now, let's do Select All. We're going to bring our little bear back to the middle. Here, I can mirror my bear, and he's upside down. Even though he's upside down, I can still rotate him, flip him back up, and he's still, so he's not right, so I can rotate him here. But, again, say if I wanted him to slant sideways, we click our almost closed circle, which is our rotate. It changes our corners to four hollow squares, and we can rotate this way. Try that again. Click Rotate. There we go. And you continue to rotate until you're happy with where he is. Okay. And we can undo and start over. So, again, let's see. We have our lettering and we have our monogram. Here you can select, this is version 6, and version 7 and version 8 you have more monograms and more fancy um, shapes and everything in your, in your software. But here I only have two. So in my monogram, I can select a decorative pattern to go around it, and here I can select my patterns. And these are all the patterns that I have. So let's do pattern 12, I love hearts. Click select. Now, let's choose our monogram. Let's go with a J, insert, G, insert, C, insert. Click OK. And that little itty bitty box is our monogram. But we need to get control of it so we can make it larger. Click our select object. Click within. Now let's change our hoop size again to a 4 by 4. Now we can move our design here. And again, I can go to Edit, Numerical Setting. I can size or I can rotate, but let's size it. It tells me I can size it at 100%. Or I can do a custom size, which is here. And the great thing about this is if you move one of these, this one will automatically move. So let's take that one up to, let's see, 1.65, and this changed to 1. Point. We can click Preview, and it shows us our new size. Click OK. Now, we have our monogram, but say we want to do color friendly. Again, we go to our spool of thread, and we can change our monogram colors here. We can change it since it has hearts. Let's go pink. And there we go. Click our realistic preview, and we have our two hearts and our monogram. Okay. So to zoom in and see what you have, here's your zoom in button. Your zoom out, your two by two. This is your selected object zoom, and your zoom all. So we zoom all. And you can just go in and play with your software and see how much fun you can have. Now, start over. No, we're not going to save. Let's go back to our rectangle. Now, our rectangle, we're going to go back to our fill stitch. And of course, we don't have an outline for a zigzag or a run stitch because this button is not pressed in, which is our line sew. So we press our line sew, and it gives us our zigzag. So, we're going to make a square. 
Right now we're at 0, 0.00, which means it's going to be the straight corner squares. Now, if I wanted, I can go to a 0, 0.20. I haven't changed anything except that number, and it gives me kind of a curved square. But say that's too much of a curve for me, so I can actually go in and type in point one zero and create my own size. That's less of a curve. Well, that's still a little too much for me, so let's go to point zero five. And there we go again. So if I go here, let's see, point zero five. There we go. And this one should be a point ten. And what we have here are slider curves from here. So a realistic preview. And you see the difference. This is point zero, point two zero, point one zero, and point zero five. Okay. Now we have our circle. With our circle, let's use some colors. Let's use some blues here. Let's do a light blue. And we can change our outline to a blue. Okay. Now, we have the ability to do a circle, an arc, a fan square, or an arc and string. So here we can just do an arc. Here. We can do a fan here. We can do an arc and a string here. Okay. So you have the ability to just go in and play with your software and make all the different shapes that you want. Kind of looks like a Pac-Man. Okay. Let's see. make sure that we've covered everything. Okay, and we did cover your undersew, but we'll go back over. Let's go back to our sew. Let's create a square. Here. We're going to do a square. Now, here's our square. So, let's watch our undersew. Oh, sorry. Stop that. It's a little too fast. Okay. Now, what it's doing is it's doing our, rich, our first color. And here comes our undersew. This is what stabilizes your fabric to allow for the stitches to go on top. This will keep your embroidery from buck, from puckering and bunching up once it's washed. And your, like I said, your undersew is what stabilizes your fabric for your embroidery. And now it will stitch on top. So while we're watching that, let's see. Okay, and I need to show you how to set up your grid. Okay, right now we have go to display, and I use my grid because it helps me to easily line up all of my letters. If I'm importing letters or if I want my designs to line up on the same page, it's easier if I have my grid. But we can go to our grid setup here, and you can do a grid. You can you have no grid at all, you clicked, and that's where you, that's no grid. Let's go back to a display, do a grid setup. We can show grid. We can do with axis or without, and that's what it looks like without. Display, grid setup, with axis, and then we can do a snap grid. Snap grid, which means your designs will only fall, will only snap within the squares. It, you do not have the flexibility to put them halfway between. Now, you have the ability to enlarge your squares or to make them smaller. Okay, you can enlarge your squares. And do. Go back to display our grid. We're going to go back to our original setting. Oh, that's close enough. Okay. Let's 
see, and we're going to our option page. Uh, we've covered our option, our programmable stitch. So again, let's review. We have our open, our import, our save, save as. We can write to our card. We can do a print preview. We have our edit, which we can undo, duplicate. Um, let's see, we have our image, which we can input. Our text, our show, our display. Let's go to our new page, cancel here. We can import from a file, import from our design center. We, we have our auto digitizing tool, and we have our fourth toolbar, which covers um, our digitizing as far as our edit points, our magnification or zoom, our lettering, our shapes, our um, outline tool, our manual digitize, and our measure ruler. We have our zigzag running stitch motif, EV. And then for our fill stitches, we have our satin fill, programmable fill, and motif. Now, at this time, if there are any questions, we'll take any questions that you may have right now. Uh, yes. Uh, where are some of the icons not lit up? The icons are only lit up when they are available to do, um, to be used at that particular moment. For example, if I'm going to import this file, we have our devil. Well, I've now inputted my devil, input my devil, it gives me the ability to undo it. So before my icon was not lit up, now my redo is. So whenever you, these icons are available, they will light up. Are there any other questions? Hello? Yes, what is the importance of underlay? Underlay is, is stabilizes your designs for, um, your, for embroidery. It keeps your fabric, it stabilizes your fabric so that it doesn't pucker and it doesn't stretch or become regularly shaped. Okay, um, one last question. What is the difference between import and open again? Okay. To open a design is when you actually are opening a new design, it doesn't give you the ability to combine designs. So if you open, you're just going to open one design. To import a design it means that you can combine several designs into one embroidery frame, such as importing our devil with our teddy bear. If there are no other questions, we will prepare for our second lesson, which will be on lettering. And I thank you, and have a great day.